I think not killing is very easy for everybody in this room. Not stealing and taking things without permission of this owner is easy for most people in this room. <laughs> right? Avoiding sexual contact, I think all of you, 24 gem. <laughs> Give it a rest. 24 gem, no bubbly can, right? Can. Justin, Justin's like, 24 hours, ah, yeah, you go back to sleep, wake up, go run outside, up, take a whole shower, and already the vow finished. Okay? Okay, number four, no lying and deceiving. 24 hours can, right? Even if you're business people. Can, 24 hours can. Okay. No intoxicants. They wrote here toxicants. It's intoxicants for people who have not studied English. I won't tell you who typed that out, but it's not the president of the center. <laughs> avoid intoxicants, not toxicants. <laughs> Your next thing should be right, avoid toxicology. <laughs> oh dear. No alcohol and tobacco and drugs, except for medicinal purposes. So if it's medicinal, you need to smoke a cigarette bud, smoke a cigarette bud, like medicinal, otherwise your hand's shaking, what? <laughs> avoid eating more than one meal a day. Okay, that's gonna be a little difficult for some mm. people. <laughs> Can you imagine Koki in front of the Buddha? Oh, <laughs> make the clock go faster, please. <laughs> another, another 23 hours and 55 minutes to go, I'm starving. <laughs> yes. So, that one, okay. And what you do is you go to sleep, and you wake up before 12, you have your lunch. After you have your lunch, you gotta eat at one meal, you can't have a little bit here and 30 minutes to eat, 30 minutes, that's cheating. Just one meal and finish it. No break in between, okay? You have your lunch, afternoon till midnight. You don't have any food. But if you have gastric or your stomach is screaming very loudly and it's embarrassing you, you may have some milk with some water or some juice that's diluted. No undiluted direct food. The point is what? The point is disciplining yourself. And some of us need to take this vow for about three months, okay? <laughs> And during that day, you try to avoid meat, eggs, onions, garlic, red. Don't go crazy. Don't go to the mamak store. Ga onion na, ga garlic ka. Garlic naan, ga garlic ka. You know, some people are very intelligent. Uh, one garlic naan, please. And then they're like, does it got garlic? <laughs> so the waiter from India goes, Why we write garlic and no garlic la? <laughs> okay, so, because garlic and onions are considered foods that block the wind channel. When we do higher tantric meditations, okay, listen up everybody, because when I say higher tantric, everybody's like. <laughs> okay, when we do higher tantric meditations, no joke, later, 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 for you goody goodies who stick around, who's loyal, who listen, who got good, good devotion, who's all goody gun drops and walk up and say, can I have initiation? You'll get it. Then later we'll talk about it more. Not now, not now, because now you're, you're infants. So I'm not going to give you a Maserati right now. Okay, what I give you is a, a, a rattle. You're play with it. <laughs> so what happens is this, is, is garlic and eggs and onions, chicken and pork and fish, in tantric system are considered foods that block the winds. So when you do certain types of meditations, those food block the winds. You don't have to avoid it forever. But certain meditations, certain times, certain practices, you avoid. Okay, just like after you take a shower, you know, you avoid the air con, you avoid the wind. Who in this room takes a shower and stand in front of the fan? <laughs> you know, it's just simple procedures to help your body coordinate better. So those are foods that is to train us for higher practices in the future. Higher practices, okay? And um, avoid sitting on high expensive beds or seats with pride, also sitting on animal skins. Well, animal skins, you know, is not really in thing anymore, so we don't need to talk about it. Any of you own, own, you know, tiger skins, bear skins, furs, and minks? Don't wear it anymore because it's out. It's been out for the last 10 years. You wear that, it's really out. It's imitation furs now. So it's really politically not correct. Not correct. Okay? So um, avoiding sitting on high, high expensive beds, meaning with pride. You don't go home and, and then throw your mattress on the floor and tell your husband, I took a vow, we gotta sleep on the floor, dearie. <laughs> gotta sleep on the floor, no meat and no sex. Sorry. He's like, no more, don't go to Kichara house anymore. <laughs> no, it's not about that. You go back and you sleep on your bed, but you sleep on a bed like this. You sleep on a bed thinking about all the people who sleep on the streets. Think about all the people who don't have a place to sleep. Think about all the people with no blankets. Think about all the people 
who every night have nowhere to sleep, sleep in boxes, in plastic bags, on the gutter, in the alleys. And from where I come from in America, there's a lot. It's very difficult to walk down the street and not cry, for me. So that's why we have KSK. We do that on Saturday nights. We give food to people. Every Saturday night, our center gives food, and we're going to expand that to a soup kitchen and more. In any case, think about those people, and therefore, break their pride. And then when you sleep in the bed, don't think, oh, I have a beautiful bed, it's big, and I'm so good, I'm so wonderful. See, just sleep on a bed and think, I'm going to rest my body. Okay? And avoid wearing jewelry, perfume, makeup. Avoid singing, because jewelry, perfume, makeup is used specifically to attract. We wear a perfume so that when someone walks by, the pheromones go off. We wear makeup. We wear makeup, unless we're Tammy Faye Baker, to attract. Some of you don't know Tammy Faye Baker. Look it up on the internet. It's scary. Um, we wear makeup to attract and to get people to look at us. I mean, for men in these days, it can be gel, it can be aftershave, okay? It's equivalent. Whatever you're using to attract the opposite sex or the same sex, whatever you're into. Uh, jewelry, you know, if you have your marriage ring, you don't have to get rid of your marriage ring. You're not wearing that to, sh to, you know, like show off. In fact, some of us think it's a prison, we like to get rid of it. Oh, I took the vow. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, no. You don't run home and say, I can't wear my marriage ring for 24 hours and hang around in Gay Long. <laughs> or Chow Kit. Oh, I took a vow, you know, I can't wear the ring. Your wife's like, hmm, I'm going to talk to that llama. No, no, no. Your marriage ring is okay. Okay, you have your Buddha pendants, that's not jewelry. You can wear your Buddha pendants. Jewelry you wear to specifically, you know, make yourself, you know. <laughs> no. 24 hours can what? 24 hours. All right? And if you find it very difficult, now you know why you must do it. If you find it very difficult. Okay? And uh, let me see. Uh, doody doody. Uh, no singing. Any of you cannot sing for 24 hours? No, you can. And if the radio comes on, a nice song comes, you slip, just catch yourself. Remember, there's four intents. You have to have four intents to break your precepts. Just simply doing it doesn't mean you broke your precepts. Like you got with friends tonight, you know, you have supper, or, or, or tomorrow you have supper or something like that, or lunch, I'm sorry, not supper, lunch. And you slip, you eat pork, you know, uh-oh. You didn't break your vow because you didn't want to. You didn't say, okay, I'm going to eat pork, I'm going to order it, you know, get a kill, bring it here, and then, <laughs> you know, you didn't do that. So if you slip by accident, you didn't break your vow, okay? And uh, no dancing. Some of you don't even have to take that vow. I don't think you can dance. <laughs> I don't want to be mean, but you know, some of you I don't think can dance. And I don't want to point any fingers, especially at matronly, elderly, respected ladies of society. <laughs> it's not very polite, but uh, let me just peek in that direction. So that one is, I, sh I know that lady's thinking, ah, yeah, no problem, no dancing, I can't even dance. <laughs> nuts? Okay. <laughs> I, I still can't get over the nuts on the throne. So for, it's, and it's, look, it's got three varieties. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, and cashews. It's like, you know, like, oh, how are you guys today, you know? <laughs> did you, and uh, did you have trouble driving here? Um, how was your day at work? I, I don't understand the nut thing, but never mind. <laughs> it's an offering. They even put pills up here in case I get a fever because I have to wear 50 meters of cloth. I've been begging designers, design something that makes me beautiful and slim and also cool. Some Tibetan robe that's not made for Tibet. Thank you, not for Tibet. These robes are made for Tibet. You wear this in Tibet, you need another robe because you're freezing. But in Malaysia, you wear this, you lose weight. You lose body water. At the end, you're, you're dripping. You're dripping. Un even your underwear, you have to go like that. Oh dear, it's so hot. Okay. So I'm looking for people who can make me a Tibetan robe that looks Tibetan, but that's got built-in air conditioning. Yes. Okay, and um, no dancing and no playing music. I mean, come on. All of you don't have to play your banjo and guitar one day, right? Da, 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 right? Okay, right? Yes. That means like, but I play the guitar every night. I'm a rock star. You know, I'm, 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 I'm Slash. I'm like, you're Slash? That's right. So one day you don't play your guitar, Ken, right? Okay. So I think the only vow that anybody here will have problem with, I foresee is, what's tomorrow? What day is it? Wednesday, Tuesday, what? Tuesday. It's a business day. Some of us have to go to work. Some of us have to go to office. We can't go there without fixing our hair, fixing our face, fixing our body, fixing this, fix that. You walk in, they say, go home, please. All right? So some of us have to still look professional. So we make an exception. Not everybody. We make an exception. A vow number eight. 
which is no jewelry, no perfume, no makeup, no singing, no dance, all that, just forget it. For some of you, for some of you taking the vow, say, okay, that last vow, I don't take, I take the other seven. You can do that, uh, no choice. Better you take seven than none. Right? Better take, better take seven than none. Because why? This is not Tibet. Tibet, you say, you got makeup? They're like, what's makeup? What's perfume? Perfume is, uh, is yak. You know, they take a dead yak meat, they rub it on themselves, and then the girls walk by, they go, I mean, that's Tibet, right? This is not Tibet. So the thing is, for some of you, because you have to work professionally, you have to be groomed, you have to wear gel, you have to do that, then don't take number eight. Just think when you're, when you're repeating vows, I don't take number eight. I take all seven. For the rest of you, say, I take all eight. And do it well and think. For 24 hours, I hold my vow until tomorrow night, 12 midnight. And do it very well. Any question about it? Yes. It's not jewelry, it's a timepiece. I mean, you know. You have to see what time it is, you have to get to work, right? Daddy calls, what's going on? Yeah, I understand. Watch is fine. You wear your simple watch, you don't wear your Cartier or Rolex with 58 diamonds so you can show off and, and flash people and blind them. Just wear your simple watch. Lah. I'm sure all of you own a simple watch. Oh, no, 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 you use your soap. You use your shampoo. Don't do it without, just don't do the water thing. <laughs> This, this nice lady is thinking she has to wash herself with no shampoo and, all, and soap and all. How can? Tomorrow you come to West Side, they was like, hello. <laughs> no, no, no. Excessive means after you finish, no. Can, can, can. Those are, it's not you bought the perfume, they just come with it, you can't help it. Okay, yes? After we have taken the precepts from you, we can take them independently if you want to do it like next yes. week or another day. Yes. Just After you take the precepts from me, some of you have already taken it, you can take it again and again and again whenever you like. On your birthday, wonderful time to celebrate precepts. On your mother's birthday, what a beautiful way to repay our mother's kindness, our beautiful, holy, wonderful mother. What else do you think? You give your mother another diamond, another ring, she don't want, your mother's not greedy. Give them your vows. Hold the vows quietly. You know, in a Chinese tradition, they have holding, no eat like a meat for one, one month, two months, or one lifetime if my mother becomes well. Well, same thing. So you can take the vow on your mother's birthday, on your father's birthday, on a special uncle, on a special teacher. Example, you have a great school teacher that really went out of their way to help the students that made a difference in your life. Take a vow for them. You can take it any time. You can take it on your holiday, take it on a weekend. Where do you take it? You take this sheet that's been passed out to you, you recite it just like we're reciting it, and you do it in front of a Buddha image. Then you have to, you have to carry this Buddha image to your hotel, no la. No, you don't have to drag this, you know, pack it up, excess luggage, no. You can have a small Buddha image, you can have a picture, you can have a line drawing, and if you don't have anything at all, visualize the Holy Buddha there, visualize. And make three prostrations and do exactly what we are about to do after you have received it from me, okay? I have received these vows from the great master and the great Geshe, Tsurum Gelsen of Los Angeles, over 20 years ago. And we practiced it in the center. All right, so I'm giving you my source and my lineage. And I am sure that Geshe received it from either His Holiness Kepji Saramji or Kepji Trijan Dojichan, Trijan Ramji, this is his Rukurus, or maybe even His Holiness the Dalai Lama, okay? So I've received it from them. Any other questions, please? Any other questions? And for those of us taking the vows who are beyond this room, who are another time zone, you follow your time zone and take this. So even, even if you take this later than us, it's okay. Even if you take it a little later and you miss a few hours, take it, all right? Let's say that you were supposed to start at 12 midnight, but you started at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning. Take it anyway, don't be so harsh. Why? It's better you hold the vows for 18 hours than no hours. So people outside of this room who are out there uh, in cyberspace, you can take these vows at your own timing. And after you've taken these vows, does it work over the internet? It should work over the internet. Why should it work over the internet? As long as there's sound, it should work. Okay, because you need to hear sound. And, um, and uh, let me see. These vows, these vows are not refuge vows. Let me make it very clear. These are not refuge vows. These are humanitarian vows. So even if you're not a Buddhist, can you take those vows? Yes, because there's nothing about here that says you have to be a Buddhist. They're humanitarian health, spiritual health vows. So if you take these vows, they're spiritual and they're humanitarian. So if you're thinking, but I'm not a Buddha, how can I take it in front of Buddha? You can take it in front of Jesus Christ. You can take it in front of the cross. You can take it in a mosque. You can take it anywhere you want. You can take it in front of a Hindu temple. 
You can take it in front of a picture of your mother. No problem. No problem. It's self-determination. So for us who are, call ourselves Buddhists, then we would take it in front of an image of a Buddha or in front of our teachers, directly in front of us. Once we've taken it, we have the vows in our mind stream. Please remember that. Once we take it, we have the vows in our mind stream, we can take it again and again. Please take it on auspicious days. When your, your birthday is coming up, an anniversary is coming up, something fun or something that marks, maybe you started your business, it was on this date that your business, you know, you, you started or whatever, take it on those days because those are very auspicious days for you. Since it's for you, it marks something special. So you mark something special by doing something special. What is that? Taking vows that bring you to individual liberation. Individual liberation. If it's along the Hinayana motivation, if it's the Mahayana motivation, it's liberation, full liberation. So that's very, very important. And remember, the motivation must be anger or attachment, and you want to break the vow. And then you actually break the vow. And after you break the vow, you're happy about it. That's how you do it. All right, so that means what? You, I'm going to eat pork. You order it. Ah, I got my vows, whatever, lah. I don't care. And then the pork comes, you, you gop it down, you eat it, you don't even chew because you're so excited, and you just swallow it. After you swallow, you go, mm, that was delicious, more. You broke your vow. Why? Intent, action, dedication. What's dedication? John, 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 No, no, no. Dedication means you're happy with what you did. I'm very happy, I want to do it again. And then you know, you know your vows. Okay, you go with a friend, you go with a friend, right? And you forgot, it's like, ooh, ooh. They order food, and then you didn't know there was pork inside. You didn't know there was, food, th there was some chicken inside. You didn't know there was garlic inside. You didn't know. You didn't know it had that inside. Therefore, you eat it by accident. You didn't break your vow. You didn't break your vow at all. Not at all. So if you, if you intentionally do it, then it's broken. But it's by accident, no. Okay? Any questions on that? Any questions? Yes. I think nowadays there's a lot of people who um, their sleeping time and waking up time is totally turned around. Like uh, we go to sleep. Doesn't six matter. Twelve to twelve, twenty-four hours. No, but uh, the, the eating times. So it's twenty-four hours. Oh, it's just twenty-four hours. You just hours. do twenty-four hours. So if you're eating times like that, you do it at your eating time. Oh, thank you. Okay, you just do it. You know what to do. But, but for this case, I would recommend you still follow noon. Yeah. That means if you usually eat breakfast at six p.m. For one day, eat your breakfast at 11 a.m. Sure. Just for one day. Yeah. For those okay. who do eat regularly, they could s kind of switch it around a little bit. Of course, yeah. of course. Okay. Of for course. health reasons, thank you. Just for one day. Just sit in your leather skin, it means you don't go out and buy it and put it there and sit on it. La. I mean, you know, even the couch and that, what can you do? You can't ride on top of your car, right? Good question, but not practical. <laughs> Just ride inside and say to your seat, I'm sorry. I mean, what can you do? Be practical. It's just like this question this lady had here, which is, you know, do I wash with my shampoo and soap? <laughs> Same thing, just practical. Good question, but let's use logic now, huh? Then you can't wear your shoes. Then you can't wear your watch band that's got leather, right? You can't wear some chains yeah. that's got leather. I mean, I, everything's out. You can't wear your own skin leather. <laughs> I mean, we can go extreme wide. Remember she said, I can't wear my skin. Can you skin me? I mean, good question, but these things you cannot help, you cannot help, you're not breaking your vow, you, you, you got one car, two cars, you oh, got leather, what to do? Unless you're Xiao Chen, you can switch around, you know? <laughs> questions? Good question, but uh, think. Questions, please. What is the effect of uh, breaking your vow? Never meeting Temurmachi again. <laughs> Everybody's like, break it, break it, break that vow. Hmm. Everything that it says here, that you get the benefit, becomes the opposite. What are the benefits that they wrote on top? It becomes the opposite. Okay? But, since it's 24 hours, it won't be so powerful. If you take a vow for life and you break it, you can repair it, but it's much more powerful. Okay? Good question. All right, I believe you. That looks pretty tough. So what you do is this. You eat a nice, delicious big meal tomorrow, before noon. In the afternoon, just drink some dilated, ju dilute juice. Mix some water with it. 
Okay? And then after 12, you can pick out. Right? <laughs> it's 12 tonight to 12 noon and 12 midnight. It's very easy. In fact, after this, you can go home and sleep, right? You go home and sleep. By the time you wake up, it's already almost it's morning, right? Then you can have a big, fat, delicious breakfast, feed your face, one meal, big one. So I would wait till like the latest I can, 10, 30, 11, then because <laughs> you eat early in the morning, then by 12, you're like, oh, no, right? So eat as near 12 as you can, not past 12. And don't play with your clock. <laughs> and eat a lot, then you're OK. Then afternoon, evening, you come here, you'll be busy doing this, that, that, that. OK, already, finish already, right? You'll be fine. And if you do slip and break your vow, it's got to be with intent. If you slip and break your vow, what you can do is do 21 Vajrasattva mantras, apply the four opponent powers, regret, and do 21 Vajrasattva mantras and just say to Buddha, the Buddha in here, I'm sorry. Okay? Questions? Yes. Can you it's drink, working. Um, coffee in the morning and then have your meal like around, like, you know. Coffee you is know. not a problem, it's your meal. One meal. Oh, okay. That's it. Coffee's not right. Didn't say nothing about liquids, right? Coffee is not nurturing or, nu or it's not a nutrient. It's not something like milk. Milk and juice is considered like food because it's nutritious. But if you want to drink water, that's fine. If you want to drink coffee, that's fine. You want to kill yourself, happy birthday. You're going to look dried up and pale and really wrinkly before your time. Oh. 24 hours, no music. Um, Do I need to translate that into Chinese? <laughs> no music. Uh, what about it's the, ring, it's the ringtone from a phone or something? Of course that one you cannot help. <laughs> Of course, that one, change your tone for 24 hours, like put the beep beep. <laughs> Kenna, you know how to change your ringtone? You don't know how? I help you. <laughs> Kenna, any more intelligent questions, please? <laughs> well, he's brave, that's for sure. Can you change your ringtone? Change your ringtone. Then no more break your vowels, right? Okay. So if you go on the internet and they play music on it, it's not your fault, that's them. You're going onto a site or something. Sometimes when you open the initiative, da da da, right? When you turn on your phone, dun da dun 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 dun, that's not music, that's the phone. You can't help it, that's part of the package, right? So if you're riding on a bus back home, LRT, they're playing music over the intercon, that's not you listening to music, that's the LRT. It's saying you purposely to put it on. You purposely enjoy, you purposely want it, and then you're like, oh, I want music, I don't care about the vowel. Okay? Play. Can you, can you pluck the hair out of your ear? Yes, you can. We'll be playing uh, some chanting, you know, some uh, downstairs. That's not music. But chanting and melodious singing is not it's music. It's music okay. increases attachment. Chanting decreases it. Okay. Even Dharma it, music in decreases yeah. attachment. Yes, that's not music. Things like we do in the monastery, we do chanting, we do certain rituals. That's not considered music. That is an offering to the Buddhas. And by doing offering of music to the Buddhas, you in fact create the potential to destroy attachment to the music. You understand? Mm. Good. Questions? For example, what about people who take the vow without the intention? Just like, for example, they just do all of this, but without the intent. Without the intent of what? Of hold, I mean the vows. Like what you say. So they didn't take the vows, the end. How can you break what you don't have? What's your question? I don't get it. Okay. So everybody else on this planet that's not in this room, do they break their vow tonight? If they eat or tomorrow, they have bubbly, they wear perfume? Then people on Mars, they're not here, so do you think they're going to break their vow if they you know, wear perfume? No, right? Thank you. Questions? And don't laugh at people who have unintelligent questions. They can't help it. They're trying the best they can. Shin's like, oh. <laughs> questions? No, it's all in good faith. We can play with each other and joke with each other. What's the big deal? We all make mistakes sometimes. Questions? So the exception here is that vow, that number eight. Okay, those of you, you can think seven or eight, up to you. Everybody ready? Good, let's go through the prayers, and then uh, we'll go through it step by step. Uh, please light incense. Please visualize your precept giver as the same nature as Shakyamuni Buddha. Please think like that. Whether your preceptor is Shakyamuni Buddha or not is make the difference. You want to take it from Shakyamuni, so you visualize it like that. Okay? Guru is Buddha. Guru is Dharma. Re recite with me. Guru is Buddha. Guru is Dharma. Guru is Sangha also. Guru is the originator of all goodness and happiness. To all Gurus I go for refuge. Guru is Buddha. 
Guru is Dharma. Guru is Sangha also. Guru is the originator of all goodness and happiness. So all Gurus I go for refuge. Guru is Buddha. Guru is Dharma. Guru is Sangha also. Guru is the originator of all goodness and happiness. To all Gurus I go for refuge. To accomplish my and others' aims, I will generate bodhicitta. To accomplish myself and others' aims, I generate bodhicitta. To, gener to accomplish my and others' aims, I generate bodhicitta. For all the people that's been very kind to you in your lifetime, for all the people that's shown you any morsel of kindness or help or assistance that's fed you and clothed you and gave you an opportunity, gave you help, gave you any type of assistance in this life at all, you dedicate it for those people. And especially you think about your precious mother and father or those who have been kind to you, who raised you, you dedicate it for them. May they never be separated from the Buddha's compassion and always be born in the Buddha's presence to be able to learn to transform, to become a fully enlightened being. And in fact, all sentient beings that are existent want only one thing, the same thing as I want, happiness. Therefore, I dedicate my vows and this effort of 24 hours to all sentient beings who wish the same thing as I do. May we all achieve great happiness, full liberation, nirvana. May the ground of all realms be pure everywhere, free from the roughness of pebbles and stones and so forth, and even as a palm of one's hand, and smooth as the nature of lapis lazuli. May the offerings of humans and gods, those physically offered and those visualized, become peerless clouds of Samantha Bhadras, pervading entirely. Om Namo Bhagavate Benza Sawa Pama Dine Tata Kataya Arha Samya Sambudaya Teyata Om Benza Benza Maha Benza Maha Teja Benza Maha Pidya Benza Maha Bodhicitta Benza Maha Bodhi Mando Prasang Kramana Benza Sawa Karma Varana Visudane Benza Ye Soha Om Namo Bhagavate Benza Sawa Paramadane Tata Kataya Aya Samya Sambudaya Teyata Om Benza Benza Maha Benza Maha Teja Benza Maha Pidya Benza Maha Bodhicitta Benza Maha Bodhi Mando Prasang Kramana Benza Sawa Karma Varana Visudane Benza Soha Om Namo Bhagavate Benza Sawa Pama Dane Tata Kataya Arhate Samya Sambudaya Teyata Prasang Kramana Benza Sawa Karma Varana Visudane Benza Soha Completed collections and the pure Dhamma Datu May these gifts be such One incense please Just burn one, give me Invocation is inviting Shakyamuni to this place so when we refer here, protector of all beings, protector, in this case, does not refer to a Dharma protector. Protector refers to the real protector, the ultimate protector, Lord Buddha himself. So by holding incense, whether you have it or not, doesn't matter. We invite Lord Buddha here to purify the air, purify the place, purify the abode for such a holy being to come forth. And then we invite the holy being to come forth and take residence in the holy image we have here. We don't pray to statues. We pray to the Buddha. So in order to pray to a statue, I'm sorry, in order to pray to a Buddha or a statue represented by him, representing him, we must invite the actual being here. Okay? Protector of all sentient beings, destroyer of maras with eternal love, you fully see each and everything. Bhagawan in attendance, please come to this place. And I will recite the mantra. Everybody, please do three prostrations. Full length or half length does not matter. All right? And some of you who are not taking vows, even you listening to the vow teaching is beneficial for you. That's for the future. When I give vow, vows, people without vows may attend because I give Dharma teachings together. Please make three prostrations to Shakyamuni, thinking your guru and Shakyamuni is one. The first prostration, please. Om Namo Manjushri Ye, Namo Sushri Ye, Namo Uttamashri Ye Soha. Second prostration, Om Namo Manjushri Ye, Namo Sushri Ye, Namo Uttamashri Ye Soha. Completely take refuge in the Buddha. 
third one, Om Namo Manjushriye, Namo Sushriye, Namo Utama Shriye Soha. Good. Please have a seat. Please read very respectfully together with me. Praise the Lord Buddha, our founder. To the Guru and the founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, the glorious conqueror, the subduer of the Shakya clan, I prostrate, go for refuge, and make offerings. Please inspire me. To the Guru and founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, go for refuge, and make offerings. Please inspire me. To the Guru and founder, the endowed transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, the glorious conqueror, the subduer from the Shakya clan, I prostrate, go for refuge, and make offerings. Please inspire me. Respectfully, I bow with body, speech, and mind. I present clouds of offerings actually imagined, I declare all non-virtuous, I did since bega time began. I rejoice in the merits of Aryas and others. Please remain here until the end of samsara and turn the wheel of dharma for all sentient beings. I dedicate all virtues to enlightenment. Everything that you like in this life, everything that you really treasure. Oh, good, good, good. Just when I said that, it fell towards me. Good sign. When we actually finish the mandala, we make it fall towards us. It means our wishes come true. So whatever you guys wish for, it's coming true, and it's coming to me. <laughs> that's what I'm wishing for. It comes to me. You're like, but that's not fair. You, you know all the tricks in the book. I know. You go join the monastery. You'll know the tricks too. Okay. Think that everything you desire in this world, everything that you like, everything beautiful and wonderful that you like, that you're really attached to, offer it up now. And even your partners, your husband and your wife, everything, your clothes, your hair, your jewelry, your makeup, your clothes, your, your car, your position, your power, your reputation, all that offer up. And for some of us, it will be very hard because even in visualization and imagination is very hard. What does that mean? That is the cause of us staying in samsara. So we offer it up symbolically. We offer it up symbolically in order to cut it. Cut what? Having possessions? No. The attachment to possessions. The attachment. Om Benza Bumi Ahom. Great powerful golden base. Om Benza Reke Ahom. Diamond heart fence. This iron fence encircles the outer ring. In the center, Mount Meru, king of all mountains. In the east is the continent, Purva Videha. In the south, Jambudipa. In the west, Apara Godaniya. And in the north, Uttara Kuru. In the east are the islands, Deha and Videha. In the south are Chamara and Apa Chamara. In the west are Sada and Uttara Matrina. In the north are the islands, Kurava and Korava. In the east is a treasure mountain. In the south, a wish-granting tree. In the west, a wish-granting cow. In the north, the Unsown harvest. Here are the precious wheel, precious jewel, precious queen, precious minister, precious elephant, precious horse, precious general, and a great treasure vase. Here are the beauty goddesses, garland goddesses, song goddesses, dance goddess, flower goddess, incense goddess, light goddess, and the goddess of perfume. Here are the sun and the moon. Here is the precious parasol, the banner of victory in every direction. In the center of all treasures of both gods and men, the excellent complete collection, I offer this vase to you, great compassionate one, together with your deity entourage. Please accept with your compassion these offerings made by all suffering beings and bestow your loving blessings on me and my countless mothers. This ground I offer as a Buddha field, resplendent with flowers, incense, and perfumes. In the center of Mount Meru, four lands, sun, and moon. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure land. Then recite the last mantra, which represents offering up with no attachment. Inama Guru Rata Mandalaka Niraya Now,
please, those of you who are physically able to do the following, those who are not, remain as you are, but in your hands folded like so. All right? Those of you who are physically able to, please kneel down on your right knee and put your right hand on top of your left knee, which is up. Correct. Like this. Correct. And recite the following prayers from your heart. From your heart. Because taking vows is an honor. Taking vows is something very, very meritorious. So we do it with humility. Why? We're doing it in front of the Buddha. Okay? Please recite together with me, all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas dwelling in the ten directions. Please pay attention to me. Master, please pay attention to me. Just as the Tathagatas of the past, the Arhats, the complete and perfect Buddhas, who like the wise horse and the great elephant have done what was to be done, have performed their tasks and have laid down their burden, have accomplished their own purpose, have cut their ties with existence and who possess perfect speech, well-liberated minds and well-liberated wisdom, have taken fast day vows for the sake of all sentient beings in order to benefit them, in order to liberate them, in order to eliminate famine, in order to eliminate sickness, in order to, that the 37 A's of enlightenment be perfected, and in order that the highest, complete, and perfect enlightenment be truly realized, so do I. Then put your own name inside, whatever name you are comfortable with, and I called Tem Tuku Rinpoche from now on until tomorrow's sunrise, for the sake of all sentient beings, in order to benefit them, in order to liberate them, in order to eliminate famine, in order to eliminate sickness, in order that the 37 A's of enlightenment be perfected, in order that the highest, complete, and perfect enlightenment be truly realized, take the Mahayana fast day vows. First time. Second time, think how fortunate I am to receive vows of enlightenment from such a holy being such as Buddha Shakyamuni. Think like that. With great respect. All the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas dwelling in the ten directions. Please pay attention to me. Master, please pay attention to me. Just as the Tathagatas of the past, the Arhats, the complete and perfect Buddhas, who like the wise horse and the great elephant have done what was to be done, have performed their tasks, have laid down the burden, have accomplished their own purpose, have cut their ties with existence and who possess perfect speech, well-liberated minds and well-liberated wisdom, have taken fast day vows for the sake of all sentient beings in order to benefit them, in order to liberate them, in order to eliminate famine, in order to eliminate sickness, in order that the 37 A's to enlightenment be perfected, and in order that the highest, complete, and perfect enlightenment be truly realized. So do I, called Tem Rinpoche, from now until tomorrow, sunrise, for the sake of all sentient beings, in order to benefit them, in order to liberate them, in order to eliminate famine, in order to eliminate sickness, in order that the 37 A's to enlightenment be perfected, in order that the highest, complete, and perfect enlightenment be truly realized, take the Mahayana fast day vows. On the third time when you recite fast day vows, you must think very strongly, I have received them. I have received them. Then after that, we go to page 5, and when you skip to the, to the middle, it'll say Lama. The Lama says, this is the method. Then the students will repeat, good, good. Good meaning affirmation of what we have done. Okay? So on the third time, be very serious. Please focus. Have deep respect for the Buddha. Have deep respect for yourself. Have deep respect for the vows you have received for 24 hours. This is what the monks... This is what the nuns, this is what the tantra practitioners, this is what the great mahasiddhas and great lamas hold these vows their whole life, not just for one day, their whole life, and some for many, many lifetimes. So think, may I aspire to that. How lucky I am today on Vesak Day. I can receive the vows that Buddha himself gave and the vows that Buddha himself took to become a Buddha. I am very happy to follow in Buddha Shakyamuni's footsteps. I am very happy to follow in Lord Buddha's footsteps. I am very, very lucky and happy to follow in Buddha's footsteps, to take vows that benefit myself and others. I am very happy. So on the third time, please think you have received it. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas dwelling in the ten directions, please pay attention to me. Master, please pay attention to me. Just as the Tathagatas of the past, the Arhans, the complete and perfect Buddhas, who like the wise horse and the great elephant have done what was to be done, have performed their tasks, have laid down the burden, have accomplished their method, have cut their ties with existence, who possess perfect speech, 
well-liberated minds and well-liberated wisdom have taken the fast day vows for the sake of all sentient beings in order to benefit them, in order to liberate them, in order to eliminate famine, in order to eliminate sickness, in order that the 37 aids to enlightenment be perfected, and in order that the highest, complete, and perfect enlightenment be truly realized. So do I, called Tem Tuku Rimuchi, from now until tomorrow's sunrise, for the sake of all sentient beings, in order to benefit them, in order to liberate them, in order to eliminate famine, in order to eliminate sickness, in order that the 37 aids to enlightenment be perfected, and in order that the highest, complete, and perfect enlightenment be truly realized, take the Mahayana fast day vows. Think that you have received the vows in the form of that supplication. Top you know, this is the method Think that from Shakyamuni Buddha, Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, glorious lights come in his body, very white in the form of a ball, and that is the vows and commitments, and that comes to your body and enters and fills you with light and happiness. Why? Because you are taking vows to benefit others. So your body is filled with light and happiness and the blessings of Shakyamuni. Think like that very strongly. Feel very happy that you can receive this from Shakyamuni. Think very happy that he started this. Think very happy that he even taught this to give us a method to really cut off unhappiness short and long term. Then thinking of this, rejoicing very greatly and thinking in the future you will do more and more and hold more vows. And you will respect those who hold vows always. Please recite the prayer of the precepts written in front of you with your hands folded. Henceforth, I shall not take life I shall not take others' goods. I shall not do sexual acts. I shall not lie. I shall avoid all alcohol and cause many faults. I shall not use great or high seats and beds. Likewise, food at the wrong time, perfumes, garland, ornaments, dance, song, and so forth, I shall avoid. Just as the Arats never do actions such as taking life, I too shall abandon these. May I quickly gain supreme body. May this world, disturbed by many sorrows, be free from the ocean of samsara. I'm going to request you to recite three times and, and sitting on high seats and beds actually refer to putting down arrogance. So be very humble, humble to people. Henceforth, I shall not take life. I shall not take others' goods. I shall, I shall not lie. I shall avoid the cause of many faults. I shall not use great Food at the wrong time, perfumes, garlands, ornaments, dance, song, and so forth, I shall avoid. Just as the arhats never do actions such as taking life, I too shall abandon these. May I quickly gain supreme body. May this world, disturbed by many sorrows, be free from the ocean of samsara. And then when you say, may this world, disturbed by many sorrows, be freed, you are dedicating your vows to the world. Hmm? One more time. Very beautiful. Keep the energy up. Henceforth, I shall not take life. I shall not take others' goods. I shall do, not do sexual acts. I shall not lie. I shall avoid all alcohol and cause of many faults. I shall not use great or high seats and beds. Likewise, food at the wrong time, perfumes, garlands, ornaments, dance, song, and so forth, I shall avoid. Just as the arats never do actions such as taking life, I too shall abandon these. May I quickly gain supreme body. May this world, disturbed by so many sorrows, be free from the ocean of samsara. Think I will do that and for that reason very strongly and quietly, gently have a seat with a happy heart. Now, let's recite this beautiful mantra to help us to increase our merits together slowly, 21 times. Om Amoga Shila Sambara Barabara Mahashuddha Sattva Petma Vibhishiti Buja Taradara Samanta Avalokite Hong Hong Pes 
or Hong Hong, I'm sorry, Hong Pet Soha. And if you don't recite the mantra perfectly, don't worry. It's the intention. It's the intention. All right. Om Amoga Shila Sambara Barabara Mahashuta Satwa Petma Vibhu Shite Buja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Hong Pet Soha. Om Amoga Shila Sambara Barabara Mahashuta Satwa Petma Vibhu Shite Buja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Hong Pet Soha. Om Amoga Shila Sambara Barabara Mahashuta Satwa Petma Vibhushite Puja Tara Tara Samanta Avalokite Om Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Barabara Mahashuta Satwa Petma Vibhushite Puja Tara Tara Samanta Avalokite Om Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Barabara Mahashuta Satwa Petma Vibhushite Spuja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Hum Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuta Satwa Pedma Vib Shite Buja Dara Dara Hum Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuta Satwa Pedma Vibu Shite Buja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Hon Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuta Satwa Pedma Vibu Shite Buja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Hon Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuddha Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Ava Lokite Hon Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuddha Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Samanta Ava Lokite Hon Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuddha Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Hon Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuddha Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Hon Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuddha Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Om Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuddha Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Om Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashita Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Ava Lokite Om Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashita Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Ava Lokite Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashita Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Om Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashita Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Avalokite Om Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuddha Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Ava Lokite Hon Pe Soha Om Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashuddha Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samdha Ava Lokite Hon Pe Soha O Amoga Shila Sambara Bara Bara Mahashita Satwa Pedma Vibhushite Puja Dara Dara Samanta Ava Lokite Om Pe Soha
just as the brave, uh, by keeping moral law, purely and without pride, may we attain the ethics gone beyond. By keeping moral law, pure, purely and without pride, may we attain ethics gone beyond. By keeping moral law, purely and without pride, may we attain ethics gone beyond. Just like the brave Manjushri in gray, great Samantabhadra have realized the truth of emptiness, I dedicate these merits to the exalted ways that I may follow their profound example. Like the Tathagatas of the three times have praised as the best dedication there is, collect it to the excellent conduct of all the bodhisattvas. May all beings everywhere, plagued by suffering of body and mind, obtain an ocean of happiness and joy by the virtue of merits. May no living creature suffer, commit evil, or ever fall ill. May no one be afraid or belittled with a mind weighed down by depression. May the blind see forms and the deaf hear sounds. May those whose bodies are worn with toil be restored on finding repose. May the naked find clothing, the hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drinks. May the poor find wealth, those weak with sorrow find joy. May the forlorn find hope, constant happiness and prosperity. May there be timely rains. May all medicines be effective and wholesome pr prayers bear fruit. May all quickly be free from their ailment, whatever diseases there are in the world, may they never occur again. May the frightened cease to be afraid, may those bound be freed, and may the powerless find power, and may people think of benefiting each other. Please make three prostrations in, in uh, reverence for receiving the vows. And think while you're prostrating, I prostrate to the outer Buddha, but by taking these vows, I am also prostrating to the inner Buddha. Think very strongly. <laughs> 